The World Bank came out uh, with its India development update, giving a sense uh, of growth rates as well as the future of reforms. We spoke uh, with the economist uh, of World Bank. He's uh, with us uh, now. We, we're going to go across and ask him uh, some of the basic questions around the India development report. Uh, Dennis, if I could first get a sense of the reason for World Bank's optimism. World Bank pegging India's growth rate in this fiscal at 5.6% uh, and uh, as far as next year goes, well above 6%. Uh, what's really leading up to this optimism, what according to you are the factors that are contributing to the recovery? Thank you very much for that question. Well, there are several reasons for that. First of all, we believe that India's growth potential still remains quite high. So several years of growth below 5% have opened an opportunity for India to accelerate growth towards that high potential. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is we see that the macroeconomic environment is conducive to growth. Inflation is coming down. Um, the external environment is quite favorable in terms of oil price, in terms of recovery in the U.S., which is India's largest export market. We see the financial sector stresses stabilizing, so that again is a positive factor, and the fiscal deficit coming down. So all of that obviously supports growth going forward. And finally, we see the reform momentum picking up, and that, of course, is always good news for growth. Dennis, we'll talk about reforms in, in greater detail, but first if I could get a sense from you on where India stands right now vis-a-vis -vis some of the other emerging economies. I think India is positioned quite well. If you look across the developing world, obviously there are some examples like China, which even with a slowdown is still expected to grow beyond 7%. But beyond that, really, when you look at India, you compare with countries in Latin America, countries in, in Eastern Europe, etc. India, India is really one of the better performers globally. All right, India clearly being uh, one of the better performers worldwide. You've mentioned in detail some of the reform measures initiated by the new government in India. It's been five months now. Take us through your views on some of these measures that the government has introduced. Well, we think that there's been definitely a pickup in terms of reform momentum, and there have been some, some several fairly key actions that have taken place in terms of uh, reforming the inspection regime, in terms of improving financial inclusion, most recently in terms of deregulating diesel prices, which will have obviously huge implications on the fiscal burden going forward. So obviously we see a lot of good momentum there, but we still see several big ticket items which haven't been addressed. And the most important of that is, of course, the GST, which is a big focus section for us in terms of this recent India development update. And I would also like to focus on GST, the fact that the World Bank has made such an extensive mention of the goods and services tax, really pushing the Indian government to go forward and implement GST in India. Why do you think it can fuel growth so much? Uh, share with us your views on why you've made GST as the single most important reform that India needs to implement. Sure. Well, the reason for that is quite simple. In order for growth to pick up in India, manufacturing has to improve its performance, right? So that is a necessary condition for growth to improve. And when we look at manufacturing in India, it presents an interesting picture. The potential is very large, but so far India has not taken advantage of that. If you look at the share of manufacturing in India's output, it is quite low compared to a number of other countries, even when those countries had similar per capita income levels as India does today. So there is a lot of space for India to improve its performance. And the way to do that is to put in place reforms like GST. Because what's happening right now is, a, is that when goods travel across India, they don't travel through a common market. Trucks have to stop at uh, state border check posts. They have to pay CST. They stopped for other regulatory kinds of checks. And since 60% of freight in India moves by road, that really adds up to large logistics costs, which are several times the international benchmarks, which is really what's holding back the competitiveness of India's manufacturing sector, both domestically and internationally. And GST is the one policy action that can be implemented to, to take care of that problem. Dennis, what's the World Bank's analysis on falling oil prices and its impact on India? We're seeing, obviously, the trend is firming up. And over the next uh, couple of years, the indications are that oil prices will remain depressed. But also the other view that many are coming up with, that while India is reaping the benefits and the advantages right now, what happens when, uh, you know, it's after all a cyclical nature, oil prices, they will go up eventually. So is India prepared to deal with that? Your thoughts? Well, certainly we see the benign global oil prices as a good thing for India for a number of reasons. One, because oil imports is the largest component of the merchandise imports. So obviously that's going to relieve pressures on the, on the trade deficit and on the current account. So that's a positive. The other thing, of course, is that 
uh, fuel and oil, specifically in diesel, is used by firms to generate electricity. So that allows us to bring down those costs for firms. And finally, the fact that, that it has allowed the government right now to deregulate diesel prices and therefore to remove a big, comp a big subsidy component from, from its future expenditure commitments is also positive. So all those things add up together. And, you know, as you mentioned, of course, it is a cyclical thing. Oil prices may move up at some point in the future. Well, at that point, India may also be in a better position to withstand those shocks, particularly if, if domestic electricity generation picks up and firms are forced to rely less on generators and are able to draw more power from the grid. Dennis, lastly, any major downside risks that you see to India's recovery? Well, certainly on the external side, you have to look at some of the geopolitical tensions both in Eastern Europe and the Middle East, and that's obviously a factor. Another factor is that the recovery in Europe so far has been tenuous. As I mentioned before, you, signs in the U.S. are quite clear, signs from Europe are less so, and of course Europe is also an important market for India. So on the external side, we certainly need to watch those. Domestically, the stress in the financial sector is still quite high. As I mentioned before, they, you know, they have stopped escalating, they have plateaued, but they're still quite high, and that's something that will need to be looked at carefully going forward. But the most important thing for India is the focus on reforms. In our view, further progress on the domestic reform agenda can really mitigate all of those risks and position India to grow at the rates which we have put forth in the update, and possibly even higher. The sky is really the limit. The sky is the limit. Thanks so much, and Dennis, for joining us and sharing your thoughts. That was the World Bank's view on India a day after they released their India update.